right. Hey, everyone. Thank you once again for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Lynn Bard. Lynn uh, is HBA and CHRP. Uh, She is a transformation HR consultant and coach with over 30 years experience in human resources, operations and finance, strategic planning and training and development. Lynn's expertise has won several awards of excellence and she specializes in mentoring and coaching leaders in organizations to assist them in their roles. Lynn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, Let's dive right into the questions here. Why did you become a coach? I saw a need for supporting the leaders in the organizations. And initially when I started outside of my HR role, uh, when I started my business, I noticed that small businesses uh, really needed help with HR. And the owners especially need help in understanding their HR role because they don't have a full-time HR person. They don't have um, the support every day they're on site. So coaching them as to what their role is in HR and how they can do that better. Um, in some cases, it's just the challenges they're facing and how, um, how they can address those challenges and who they need to reach out to if they need to reach out to somebody, whether it's an HR consultant or health and safety or whoever it is, you know, who they can reach out to. So providing them those resources as well are really important. And then leaders in the organization. So in a small business, quite often they move people up into in their organization. So they may have somebody working on the floor or if if it's a mechanic shop, somebody who's, you know, a junior mechanic and they work their way up um, or in manufacturing, same type of thing. And all of a sudden they're a lead hand or a leader in the organization and they're overseeing the staff they were equal to before. So I do a lot of coaching on supervisory coaching as well. And and that's something that's really needed because um, it's difficult for them to move into that role and become that leader without being still friends with everybody in the organization. So helping them with that transition and and how they can do that and still maintain relationships. I love that. As a a business owner myself, I can sympathize with all of that. Uh, question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? You may have already answered that, but if you want to expound upon some of that. Yeah, so I have um, really, like I said uh, before, delving into an owner's HR role is uh, something that I really enjoy coaching on. And that's unique because quite often it's just coaching as a leader or th- that type of thing. But um, in a small business, HR isn't top of mind as far as HR goes, but they, the owners do HR every day when they have staff. So I find it's very important for an owner to understand their role and how they manage that HR role themselves and um, how to deal with the stress every day of dealing with the employees and the issues and challenges that they face and uh, how to make it more manageable. So I think that's where I stand out different from a lot of coaches because they tend to focus on the leadership side. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Question number three, where do you find your clients? Uh, Referrals. A lot of it is referrals and um, from uh, clients I've worked with that they've been, you know, extremely happy with the work I've done with, with them. And, uh, you know, I, I always have my team backing me up as well, because I have um, five others that work with me in the organization. And so outside of my coaching, we can support them in other ways. So, you know, it's and, and also when my team is on site or working with a client, they may notice that they're having some challenges with their HR role and uh they will suggest that they have a conversation with me and uh, quite often it turns into a coaching moment. Love it. Love it. Question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Uh, So COVID has been a challenge (laughs) Mm -hmm. right now. 
Um, the face to face is so much better than, mm -hmm. you know, distance, um, yeah. because then you can see expressions and, you know, understand what they're going through a little bit more. So sure. I, you know, doing it over a zoom or a team's call. Yes, you can still see them, but there's not that same um, empathy you can't it's harder to read body language over a zoom yeah. call than it is face to face so that would probably be my biggest challenge this year mm -hmm. uh when i can do face to face i do and sometimes you know it's uh those coachable moments like today i had to go into a manufacturing client to talk about hygiene and uh you know that was something i did face to face it, it's a very uncomfortable uh, moment for the individual so it needs to be face to face mm -hmm. um, but other than that I've really been the zoom calls and the team calls mm -hmm. is how I've been doing it but yeah it, it'll be nice when I can get back to face to face yeah yeah there's definitely an intangible quality to face to face that zoom and skype and anything remote really just doesn't have for sure mm -hmm. yeah Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? I would have started it sooner. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I was really focused on the, just the HR and I mm -hmm. always had coaching moments with, with my clients, team and, and uh, team members, but um, I would have done this sooner because I love the coaching side of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I, um, do a semi exit from my business and my daughter Krista takes over the mm -hmm. HR side of things. Um, I want to get more into the coaching, just the coaching. Mm -hmm. So I love it. It's just, yeah. it, it's such a great feeling to change lives. And mm -hmm. it does, you know, it's uh, seeing the impact of the mentoring and coaching that you do with a client mm -hmm. and how they change over the over the period of time that you're coaching is amazing. Um, That's great. So, you know, those are things that I really look forward to doing more of that and the leadership groups, because I do run one of those as well. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now for the bonus question. Uh, what is one book that you recommend all your clients read? I love the book, turn the ship around. Okay. So, it's an amazing book. Um, it is a really good leadership book. So, and for employers to learn how to allow that leadership to happen um, mm -hmm. and kind of take a step back and put the trust and faith in your team. And that's by L. David Marquette, Marquet, yep. M A R Q U E T is how it's spelled. Yeah. Interesting. Looks good. Looks good. Uh, There's a workbook you can get with that too, which quite often I supply. So I quite often buy that book and the workbook for my clients as well. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Lynn, is there anything that you would like to add or pitch or promote uh, before we close out? And also if you could please let us know where our listeners can connect with you online. Ah, so yes. Yeah. So, um, Beyond Rewards HR, we've been in business for 30 years now. And uh, the coaching side of things, the HR coach, I've been doing that for the last five and loving it. Um, and if you want to reach out to us for a coaching session or you need general HR support, you can reach us at 519-821-521. Um, Seven four four zero, or email hr at beyondrewards.ca or alternately go to our website beyondrewards.ca Awesome. Lynn Bard, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. You're very welcome. It's been my pleasure. And thank, thank you. you to our audience for tuning in. We'll see you all next time. Cheers. Bye.